Rockets are hard. That's all Elon said after Starship's eighth flight. While the mission was a spectacular show, Ship 34's failure dealt a major blow to SpaceX. The mystery of why the Starship exploded on this flight may lie in SpaceX's prided Raptor engine. Today, we'll uncover this and also offer some solutions. Stick around until the end. You won't want to miss this. On the evening of March 6th, SpaceX made another bold step towards space exploration with the eighth test flight of Starship, the largest and most powerful rocket ever built. The rocket was launched from the Starbase site in South Texas. As planned, the massive Super Heavy booster, a key part of Starship's first stage, successfully returned to Starbase, where it was caught by the launch tower a mere seven minutes after liftoff. However, shortly after, disaster struck. The Starship's upper stage, standing 52 metres tall, encountered a critical issue that led to an explosion over the Atlantic Ocean. When analysing the footage, it can be seen that prior to the end of the ascent burn at T plus 7 minutes and 45 seconds, a fire ignited in one of the ship's six engines, causing a visible crack in its nozzle. Moments later, the engines began shutting down sequentially. In SpaceX's ground control room, it was evident on the monitor that at least one of the Raptor engines had exploded. This in turn resulted in a loss of attitude control and ultimately led to a loss of communication with Starship. The final contact occurred roughly 9 minutes and 30 seconds after liftoff. To understand why Ship 34 failed, we need to understand the first thing that went wrong. The ship's engine. The Ship 34's engine, the Raptor 2, is a full-flow staged combustion cycle, FFSCC engine, powered by super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, CH4. What sets the Raptor 2 apart is the FFSCC cycle, which provides significant advantages. The energy generated by the pre-burners used to power the propellant pumps is distributed across the entire fuel flow. This results in the pre-burner exhaust driving the turbo pumps being exceptionally cool, even cooler than that of other closed engine cycles that only pre-burn one propellant. This design contributes to the engine's longevity, enhancing its overall performance and durability. An oxygen-rich turbine drives the oxygen turbo pump, while a fuel-rich turbine powers the methane turbo pump. Both the oxidizer and fuel are fully vaporized before entering the combustion chamber, ensuring efficient mixing and combustion. This process not only accelerates combustion, but also allows for a more compact and lightweight combustion chamber. The first engine to fail, and it is highly likely that the engine that blew was one of the ship's three vacuum engines. The Raptor vacuum, RVAC, shares a design similar to that of the Raptor engine, but is optimized for space operations. It features a larger exhaust section and a more expansive expansion nozzle, along with an extended, regeneratively cooled design to maximize efficiency in the vacuum of space. These extensions allow the engine to increase its thrust from 230 tons force to 258 tons. However, it also increases the height and diameter of the engine. These engines are the same type they used previously with Starship Block 1. So why did these engines that allowed Block 1 to successfully splash down explode on this flight? Well, the only changes SpaceX made to these engines were the upgrades they made when Starship moved to version 2. These include a 25% increase in propellant volume, an enhanced propulsion avionics module for controlling vehicle valves and reading sensors, and, most notably, the vacuum jacketing of feed lines and a new fuel feed line system specifically designed for the vehicle's Raptor vacuum engines. These are important, so just keep that in mind. The previous seventh flight, which marked the first launch of Starship Block 2, also featured these new upgrades. And as we know, this mission ended in unfortunate failure. After vehicle separation, a fire was observed in the aft section near one of the Raptor vacuum engines. This event eventually triggered controlled shutdown sequences for all but one of Starship's engines and ultimately resulted in the loss of communication with the ship. The incident occurred in an unpressurized area at the aft section of the ship, known as the attic, which lies between the bottom of the liquid oxygen tank 
and the heat shield. Interestingly, this area is similar to the location of the incident on Flight 8. SpaceX revealed that the most likely cause of the spacecraft's loss was a harmonic response during flight that was significantly stronger than what was observed during testing. This unexpected resonance placed excessive stress on the propulsion system's hardware, ultimately leading to the failure. Remember when I said that SpaceX added a new fuel feedline system specifically designed for Block 2's Raptor vacuum engines? These tubes could have complicated the Starship's propulsion system. Under the stress and vibrations of flight, they could have shaken too much and been damaged, causing the harmonic problem SpaceX mentioned. Another thing worth noting is that on Flight 7, when the S-33's engine started to shut down, we could see a loss of liquid methane much faster than liquid oxygen. This suggests that the methane line was damaged and had leaked, and this leaked fuel burned the attic of the spacecraft. A similar thing happened in Flight 8 until T plus 804, when things went decisively off plan, the propellant levels remained stable. When things went wrong, all three sea level engines and one RVAC engine shut down. Simultaneously, the methane level dropped significantly below the oxygen level and stayed there for the remainder of the mission. During tumbles, the propellant sloshed from one end to the other, but at each turn, the methane level consistently remained lower than the oxygen level. This provides further evidence supporting the hypothesis that the damage was caused by recent upgrades to the fuel feed line, particularly the methane line. Now, it's not like SpaceX did nothing when the incident first occurred. SpaceX has completed an extended duration static fire with Starship during its eighth flight test. The 60-second firing was conducted to test various engine thrust levels and three different hardware configurations in the Raptor vacuum engine feed lines, aiming to replicate and address the harmonic response observed during Flight 7. The data gathered from the static fire led to several hardware modifications, including changes to the fuel feed lines for the vacuum engines, adjustments to propellant temperatures, and the establishment of a new thrust target for the upcoming flight test. To mitigate flammability risks in the attic section of the Starship, additional vents and a new purge system using gaseous nitrogen are being incorporated into the current generation of ships. This will enhance the area's resilience against potential propellant leakage. However, it is clear that this is not enough. Another hypothesis suggests that the pressure spike during hot staging combined with the chaotic environment created by reflected shocks from the plume interaction of the six raptors firing off the hot stage ring directed back into the engine compartment may have also contributed to the damage sustained by Ship 34. So, after knowing all these things, what should SpaceX do? First, they can add protective layers or use stronger materials for these pipes, you know, to make them more resistant to vibration. They can then also add additional protection against fire and explosion in this area. Now, these are all good things. However, the best solution, which even SpaceX has mentioned, is to use the Raptor 3 engine. Raptor 3 is the latest iteration of SpaceX's Raptor engine, designed to eventually replace Raptor 2. However, it is still in the testing phase, and no Raptor 3 engines have yet been installed on any vehicles at Starbase. For Raptor 3, SpaceX has taken the strengths of its predecessor and pushed them to the limit. One of the most significant improvements is a substantial reduction in weight compared to previous versions. To achieve this, SpaceX engineers have streamlined the rocket's components. As Elon Musk mentioned in an interview with Everyday Astronaut, bolts and flanges and seals, especially if they're hot, were areas where the design could be optimized so SpaceX worked to minimize these parts as much as possible. The heat shield has also been removed, with the engine relying on regenerative cooling and advanced high temperature materials to endure the extreme conditions during operation. According to Elon, this change alone saves over 10 tons of weight. The reduction in externally visible components was so significant that Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, mistakenly accused SpaceX of revealing a partially assembled engine while comparing it to fully assembled engines. In addition to the weight reduction, Raptor 3 has seen a significant increase in thrust. 
It currently operates at 280 tons of force, with the goal of reaching 300 tons of force in the booster Josh C level configuration. Unlike Raptor 2, which sacrificed a small amount of specific impulse to boost power, Raptor 3 maintains the same fuel efficiency as Raptor 1, 350 seconds, while delivering significantly greater thrust. The more compact design of the Raptor 3 significantly reduces the attic volume. Additionally, thanks to its seemingly simple yet highly intricate design, the Raptor 3 eliminates most of the joints that could potentially leak into this space, greatly minimizing the risk of fire or explosion in the attic area. Elon has stated that the next flight will be ready within six weeks at the latest, but it will take longer for Raptor 3 to be fully developed. Furthermore, even though Raptor 2 is currently being used, Starship Block 2 was originally designed to accommodate Raptor 3. Using an engine that isn't fully compatible with the design can lead to potential issues or unwanted incidents. Looking ahead, this isn't the final version of Starship. SpaceX also plans to build an even larger spacecraft propelled by an even more powerful engine. This version of the engine is called Raptor 4, which Elon mentioned a few times on X. As usual, this will be a much more powerful engine than the previous Raptor 3 version with a thrust of up to 330 tons and possibly more. Engine efficiency will also be significantly increased, according to Elon. Raptor 4 could reach an ISP of 380 in just a few years. These 33 engines placed together will create a total thrust of up to 10,000 tons at sea level, which in theory will take Starship Block 3 all the way to Mars. SpaceX still has a long way to go, but they are going a little too fast. It's time for them to slow down a bit to better understand what they are working with.